This is just a quick video I'm making in response to a question I was asked a few days ago. I showed um, some parts for a, a kit for a magnetic core memory system that I'm developing and someone asked me who I had made the plastic parts and um, the answer is I make them here and the part they were asking about was a plastic cover for the memory core and I make them using this. If you haven't seen one of these before, it's just a uh, very cheap uh, laser cutter or engraver. Again, Chinese um, made. This is a 40 watt uh, version. It's quite efficient for cutting up to three millimeter thick uh, acrylic sheets like this, uh, which is mostly what I use it for. I do use it sometimes for engraving metal and uh, marking uh, various parts. Um, it can be quite flexible and versatile but um, what I was asked was firstly what do I use and when I said it was a laser uh, cutter I was asked is it any good and um, the short answer is um, yes it's quite good it kind of depends on what you want to do with it if you want a big industrial machine then no this is not uh, going to um, meet your purpose uh, and also I was asked if I had to modify it because there's a lot of information online if you just type in um, laser cutter you'll find lots of uh, videos and information about machines very similar to this and um, people are saying you have to modify them to make use of them which I think is true there's certain deficiencies and if you are familiar with um, using lasers to cut uh, materials then you'll probably know what those problems are so I'll just very quickly go over the modifications I made to this machine. So it's uh, not many, I didn't uh, modify it a huge amount, it's just um, mainly to add air assist and change the way the uh, cooling system works. So the first thing is we'll open the door, have a look inside. So this uh, model has a, a laser uh, designator for the uh, cutting position. That is a, quite useful I'd recommend having that it doesn't need adjusting when you get it it was pointing in completely the wrong uh, location when I received this machine um, but it allows you to make best use of the material you can get the um, material lined up in the right place rather than just guessing and wasting a lot or uh, even uh, running the cut off the end of the material if you've seen these before you'll notice this has been modified um, I've changed this now when this came it had the wire for the laser designator running down a small drag chain like this in fact, this is the wire I took off it and this ran sort of down here and the wire ran through it and that's all that was in there um, but of course to add the air assist I needed uh, to run a pipe down to the nozzle you can just possibly see the nozzle down here um, that blows air and uh, the purpose of that is as the laser cuts it liberates a lot of smoke and gas and that interferes with the path of the laser and it kind of diffuses the laser and it bounces everywhere and you get very messy cutting uh, and the idea here is to have a fairly uh, strong air jet blowing down to the point where it's cutting and that keeps that area clear and allows it to cut more efficiently then this big um, vent at the back is an extractor that extracts uh, out of the window. Uh, but I couldn't get a big enough pipe down the original uh, drag chain, so I replaced it. Now you can buy these, um, but I actually 3D printed this one. started by downloading a model for a drag chain off the internet and made this. Um, this doesn't have any back stops on it, so it wasn't really suitable. And what happens with this type is they, they bend whichever way they want and uh, you can't really control them. So I designed my own um, with back stops and the idea of a back stop is it will bend one way but when you try and bend it the other way it will only go so far and then it stops. And that tends to concentrate the bend in a specific uh, area within the drag chain. And then I just printed off uh, a lot of links and um, I was able to put my own chain in. If you do this you need to be careful not to allow the chain to go too far left or uh, in this area because obviously the laser comes um, from here or from here to here and then it comes from the back where the laser is housed uh, down the side of the machine so you mustn't uh, let the chain encroach in this area. 
Uh, that means I can run the pipe and the cables down through the common chain and into the control section. Um, if you're familiar with one of these, you notice this one has an extra switch on it now. That allows me to turn the air assist on and off. Um, one of the things with the air assist, I wanted it to be automatic, but if you have watched these cutting, you know that the laser constantly turns on and off, so you can't just simply connect it to uh, the laser control, otherwise the pump would be constantly cycling on and off. So what I've got uh, on this one, if I press the laser test button, hopefully you'll hear the pump start up. Um, but notice it runs for a few seconds once it's started, and you can restart it, so every time the laser comes on it resets the timer and it allows it to uh, keep running, even if the laser's turning on and off, the pump runs uh, constantly until the laser's been off for five seconds and then it turns off. And this switch is just to disable the pump if I don't want it to run at all. And the way this is all arranged is I have the pipe running from the air assist nozzle, runs down through the drag chain into this section. So I'll move the camera so you can see inside here. Okay, hopefully you can see inside, it's fairly dark in there, but um, what I've done is I've added an air pump, that's for the air assist, and it's on a uh, compliant mount so it's not too noisy. And the pipe connects here, I need to connect a filter on the inlet. And then down in the bottom you can see there's an ex uh, extra supply, and that's to power the air assist pump, but it also powers the water pump which we'll look at in a minute. Um, it was 12 volts when I bought it off eBay, um, but I've modified it so that it's now uh, 9 volts. I wanted um, the 9 volt pump to under run. It didn't need to be running flat out, it'll last longer and make less noise. And the same with the water pump. And the small board on top is just the timer board to keep it running um, in between the laser uh, short term power offs and um, it's controlled on the, the main controller board for these um, has an output that changes state when the laser turns on so it just monitors that and um, that's what's used to trigger the timer board okay we'll move the camera on the back have a quick look at the water pump okay so round the back the only real modifications here are to add this uh, water pump the machine comes with the sort of pump you'd normally fit in a fish tank, a merciful pump. Um, the real pain to use, a noisy, and um, it means that uh, you have to have a water tank sitting open that you can drop the pump into. Uh, this is a pump out of a, um, a PC cooling system. Um, almost silent when it runs. If it's running now, you probably can't hear it. I can't hear it. It's, um, they are almost silent, but it has a good um, rate of water flow. Normally this does go into a water container um, but I'm in the process of converting this to a totally sealed system. I've got uh, a radiator, the type again that comes off a computer cooling system and I'll be putting that into the uh, machine fairly soon and it will be completely uh, self-contained and I won't need to mess about with the external tank. Okay so um, that's the laser cutter I've got a few other modifications to make to it and um, overall it works very well. I'll just give you a quick look at the laser uh, tube which sits in this rear housing. So I'll just move the camera up a bit so you can see the entire tube. Okay so as you can see the tube is uh, quite big. Uh, this is a 40 watt tube and that is enough what I used it for. You won't be able to cut metal with it or anything like that but for acrylic or uh, things of that nature it's ideal and uh, it's water cooled these are not very efficient so it does generate a lot of heat and you need to make absolutely certain that the water cooling system is working uh, and in fact it has a, a, a cut out if um, the water uh, circulation stops at least that's the theory I don't think it works I've never tried it but um, quite an interesting machine to look at and uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, these would have set you back 10,000, 15,000 pounds. These days you can pick them up for um, 300, 400, 500 pounds, depending on the model that you go for. And um, they are quite useful uh, if you want to cut um, 
plastic so I say plastics it's got to be something that is uh, cuttable by laser a lot of plastics if you try and cut them will just catch fire and generate a lot of smoke and um, will not cut properly uh, but something like this acrylic cuts extremely well you had a very nice neat cut and um, the laser beam itself is very small it's about a half a millimeter in diameter so you can get very nice uh, crisp cuts and of course you can engrave with it as well depending on um, uh, how, uh, how you set it up and what power you set the laser to so overall quite an interesting machine and um, if you've got space for one uh, they're quite interesting to play with